Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Argue, where I go on the internet and I take your hot takes and your unpopular opinions and your tough questions and I respond to the best ones in front of a green screen. What's happening to culture? Why? Why? Let's go. Spotify is supremely better than Apple Music. I mean, you might have a preference of one over the other, but to say that one is supremely better than the other doesn't really make sense. They're both streaming services. They both have all the popular albums that people are trying to hear, and even unpopular albums that people are trying not to hear. Comparing Spotify to Apple Music is pretty much like, I don't know, having a pissing contest between Target and Walmart. Yeah, one is like a slightly less crappy version of the other, but a lot of the major flaws of one also carry over onto the other too. Spotify or Apple Music, I mean, they're both not paying artists that well, both are contributing to the homogenization of popular music culture. Maybe you enjoy one because you think it's aesthetically better, or it runs a little faster for you, or maybe you like the playlist better or something, but the, the, they're both just big music streaming services. The big four of grunge should replace Pearl Jam with Mud Honey. Maybe from a taste perspective, this makes sense. Uh, as Mud Honey does have a lot of great records, and they are kind of like the hardcore underground grunge fans grunge band but we are talking about the big four here and pearl jam is by every measurable statistic more popular than mud honey if we were to replace pearl jam with mud honey on these standards in the big four of grunge we could easily like throw fucking megadeth out of the big four of thrash and like put voivod in there just because your parents may have some kind of link to the music industry doesn't always mean they gave you that in this making you an industry plant but when it does that doesn't automatically discredit the genuineness and legitimacy of that artist and their music as a whole yes sometimes having parents connected to the music industry can make you an industry plant but in order to decide that you pretty much have to do your research like are you some totally unknown artist out of nowhere who was suddenly signed to a major label without much in the way of a popular or viral song or video or album or anything, and does somebody in your family know or have some kind of connection with somebody who works at the label at which you were signed, yeah, you're, you're probably an industry plant. That person's probably an industry plant. You could have your uncle working at Atlantic Records, but simultaneously, I don't know, spend your days playing in some kind of crust punk band that's signed to Southern Lord, or you make vaporwave music on Dream Catalog. Not really a correlation there. Now, while you are correct in saying, but when it does, that doesn't automatically discredit the geniusness and legitimacy of that artist and their music as a whole. Look, there have been a lot of artists over the years who have made great music, no denying that, who come into the industry either with entertainment connections or with a whole lot of fucking money. Look at Vampire Weekend, look at The Strokes, look at tons of the big names in indie music. What I have an issue with, what I think a lot of other people have issue with, is when, despite those obvious connections, you come into the industry pretending to be something that you're not, like you're just some totally organic, DIY, grassroots artist without anybody platforming you or helping you, etc. Because that's just a lie. That's just bullshit. That's, that's just dishonesty. Don't pretend to be something that you're not and like you didn't ride in on this gigantic wave of privilege. I don't really have an issue with artists who put out records that have connections in the industry or have rich parents. I mean, that's, that's whatever. Having rich parents doesn't mean you can't make good music. In Rainbows would be considered better than OK Computer if it came out around that time. Yeah, and I imagine that the instrumentation and the production would have totally blown people away as there was really no album in the 90s that would have sounded anything close to In Rainbows. So, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, much in the same way that uh, I suppose a Dead Mouse album would probably blow the no. if you brought it back to 1965. Barbie Dreams is a cheap ploy to get listens. Some of Nikki's bars are great, but it's obvious she just name drops as many people as possible to draw attention and headlines so she gets more listens on Queen. 
This, furthermore, is bullshit considering her Travis Scott comments. Yeah, pretty much everything Nicki complained about in regards to Travis Scott and the promotion of his new album and the ticket bundles and the social media stuff, it, it's really kind of the pot calling the kettle black. However, I wouldn't <laughs> call Barbie Dreams a cheap ploy as... You know, sure, it's her stirring a little controversy, but if it's done in a funny and an entertaining and a kind of smart way, then no harm, no foul. And I think Barbie Dreams is, is an example of that. I actually wish she came out with more tracks that were like that and more lyrical and more tongue-in-cheek and maybe more fun and catchy than uh, a lot of the boring, awful, horrid, and bland cuts she packed Queen out with. The UK are better at music than America, apart from hip hop. It's like he doesn't realize that, <laughs> he doesn't realize the British, they got nay-nayed. The British got nay-nayed. The British got nay nay We nay nay those Brits, and you know, honestly, in my opinion, why should we listen to them talk about music? I mean, once you get nay nay uh, you're pretty much out of the conversation. Metallica's Death Magnetic is one of the band's best albums. People only bash it because of bad production slash sound quality. Well, I mean, the quality of the sound of your music is pretty essential to whether or not your album is good and or likable because it, it, it is a it is a piece of sound art it is sound art so if the sound ain't good the the chances of people liking it, it's going to be it's going to be lower pewdiepie does meme review better the best teeth in the game could never <laughs> Waluigi will never be in the new Smash, and people just need to accept it and move on. I don't know. I mean, maybe he won't be in the newest iteration of Smash, Smush. But I don't know. I feel like Nintendo's kind of running out of wiggle room with uh, intellectual property they could add to the Smash universe. Eventually, they're going to reach a point where they, they just got to add him in. I cannot see a, a moment in time where you have like a hundred character smash roster and, and and Waluigi isn't in there. So I think if we keep praying, eventually uh, we're, we're probably gonna get a Waluigi. Despite how influential 808's and Heartbreak was and still is as an album, I don't think a lot of people give the album its proper credit and just view it as another album in Kanye's overall discography. You know, I think this has a lot to do with ideas versus execution or ideas in tandem with execution. While I have said and I will admit that 808s is a truly groundbreaking album that set the tone and set the stage for a lot of what's going on in hip hop today, I don't know if it is as well executed as a lot of the records that kind of built off of that album stylistically. I think on that album, Kanye presented great ideas, but it is still a very kind of messy and flawed album in a lot of respects, even if there are some great tracks on it. You gave Carrie and Lowell a seven for the same reasons you gave A Crow Looked At Me a nine. You know, they're both obviously albums that deal pretty deeply in death, but I think their similarities kind of start and end there. I trust Phil much more as a, a sonic conjurer in the realms of lo-fi uh, than I do Sufian, unfortunately. And Phil's account and mourning process through the experience of death is far different than that what Sufian presents on Carrie and Lowell. Phil puts you smack dab in the middle of what he was going through during that time, not taking you on some kind of nostalgic run through experiences that he had with these people who were very important in his life. And again, not to discount Carrie and Lowell because I do think it is a very good album, and not that going about talking about death and loss in that manner is a bad thing. But A Crow Looked at Me is a totally different narrative experience, and the way that you've kind of apples and orange them here in this tweet leads me to believe that you either don't really have an understanding of what one or both of these albums are about. What's your opinion on people purposefully digging through artists' social media accounts to find old dirt and canceling them, potentially ruining their career? Yeah, I think it's a little sad and desperate. Let, let, let's be honest here. The reason that people do this is because they want attention on social media and they want to have a little bit of internet clout and be that person who, oh, oh look at me. Uh, I found a person said a thing. I mean, it can be pretty funny to go back into artists' old tweets. Like, Katy Perry has this really old fucking tweet about, like, fucking black cocks. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Dr. Luke is tagged on it, too. Like, 
how, how is this reality? But just because you found something that some celebrity said years ago that is kind of offensive, it doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't mean you're crusading for anything. Oh, you fight for justice by finding tweets that uh, offend people and then trying to blast them out there and cancel the people who wrote the tweets. Yeah, you're, you're a real fucking hero. Logic is balder than you. Oh, why you gotta do him like that? My boy! You did him dirty. Fuck, I'm dizzy. Rap is getting more repetitive because of the abuse of sampling. A lot of the hip hop that I hear in 2018 doesn't even fucking sample anything. Like it's it's all just made in, in, a, in a digital audio workstation with the same fucking atmospheric synth patches and the same 808 drum sounds that everyone else is using. So like hip hop's pretty goddamn repetitive even without a great deal of sampling. So like what? What are you on about? And I'm going to leave it at that. That has been the latest episode of Let's Argue. Thank you for watching. La 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 love you. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Mama Music, forever.